All right, welcome back, System Warriors, to another edition of Pedal to the Metal, special part two Thursday night. We're rocking. We're going to bring out some blues for you later, aren't we, Eroica? What do you think? Yeah, I say we jam. All right. So, yeah, who do we have with us tonight? We have with us, first of all, Animal Mother. What's up, Animal Mother? If you help me get Cactus Team to a thousand likes, I will send you something. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. A thousand likes or a thousand views? Oh, I'm sorry. Thousand views. Oh, plus. yeah, see, he's going to move the goalpost on us. Oh, no. <laughs> <bitch>. <laughs> <laughs> the original goalpost, a thousand views. It's like a reverse pyramid scheme. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Share something and get something for free. Um, no, see. Ponzi. It's a Ponzi scheme. There you go. It's, wait, how is that a Ponzi scheme? I don't know. Scheme is when you give somebody money. <laughs> <laughs> and hope that they invest it, and then you're supposed to get money back. All right, he's fired up. All right, who else do we have with us, Eroica? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> well, we've got on tonight, uh, first I want to introduce Dark Spine Slayer. What's up, Dark Spine? Deploying smooth jazz in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> the girl from Ipanema. Excellent, dude. So how is how is, um, how is sunny, uh, sunny Canada? It's warm up there, I would imagine, this time of year. <laughs> And uh, also, tell us how you're feeling after the uh, Canadian gold medal in Olympic hockey. Oh, it's fucking t-shirt weather up here. And uh, as for that gold medal, um, suck it, Blab. Ooh. <laughs> that would lead us to our next guest, Mr. Blabadon. Blab, what's going on, dude? We're, I'm all good. We should have used Detroit, Detroit Red Wings goaltender Jimmy Howard in the net. Jonathan Quick was not a good idea. We lost because of him. Yeah, did... I have absolutely. I have absolutely no investment in the sport, so... I, I know. I just... I'm saying that for anyone who actually knows. For Canadian who doesn't have an investment in hockey, that's like finding... That's like finding Jesus who didn't resurrect. <laughs> what? <laughs> Animal already too much whiskey. Um, I, have, I have enough investment in it to say suck it, blab, so... <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, guys, we're going to do kind of a, a new thing here today on Pedal to the Metal. We're going to do um, a little bit of a fun, almost like a round robin here. Um, we didn't come up with an agenda today because we wanted to kind of keep it secret. What we're going to do is we're going to go around the horn and everybody gets to discuss... One topic in gaming that is gnawing at them currently. So it could be anything. I don't know what Dark Spine's going to say. I don't know what Hyle's going to say. I have no idea what the other two guys are going to say. We are just going to go at it. We're going to see what we come up with and hope you guys like it. So who wants to start or do you want me to start? I want you to start. All right, cool. I want you to start. You to start. All right, I'll start. The th Blab, wait, wait, wait. Can I can I say something real quick? Yeah. Blab, Why do you ask? Change Why do you ask? Because I'm kind. Oh, okay, fine. I will change. change. No, no, you're right. I will change. Change that fucking battery. It's been going off for two hours now. You're going to been... die one day because of no, it. No, no. It's been going on for three years. Oh I know. Oh, my God. Change I, the I battery. It's Come not that on. hard. Let's go. It's moving. Guilty. Who cares about the fucking battery? Let's go. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do our first topic. Animals already interrupting after promising not to. Um, <laughs> we're going to go with our the, the first topic, and this is going to be my topic. I want to discuss with you guys something that happened last week in gaming. Um, a preview was released for the game The Order. Is it 1886 or 1888? 1886. Okay. Ah, see, we can't figure it out. Nobody knows. The Order had a preview on IGN. And in that preview, Colin Moriarty of IGN uh, listed um, a lot of technical snafus in what he found in his play of the game. Now, he listed a very accurate and uh, a personal recount of, of his demo experience, and he wrote an article, a preview article, a, a first impression, if you will, about how the game played, and he said there was a lot of technical snafus. It, it, it uh, had stuttered slow uh, frame rates. There was some audio hiccups. There was all sorts of little uh, hiccups in the game, and he reported it. My question is, is that the internet blew up on this, and obviously you can tell one faction in particular, the cows, uh, were very, very upset about this preview coming out and coming to light, um, saying that the game is not final build, how dare he say these things about a game 
that's not, you know, totally completely done and in the can and ready to go. This is not fair to the game. It's hurting the image of the game. My question to you guys is part gaming, part your own personal uh, reflecting on this and also part gaming journalism. Do you think that Moriarty having his own personal you know, account of what he played and reporting on it was over the line and saying that a game that's still in its whatever, I, I would imagine it's in its beta since it's going to be released this year. Um, do you think that he was out of line for reporting that this Sony PlayStation exclusive was not up to snuff with where it should be by the time the game is released? I'm going to start with Animal Mother. Great. Um, one of the things I've learned recently while uh, heavily listening to the Giant Bombcast, it's okay to criticize a game uh, for bad technical and audio glitches prior to release. But the fact of the matter is, one of the things I have learned is that the frame rate is one of the last things finished in a game. So therefore, it is wrong to say that a game is going to have a shitty frame rate before release. Because think about it, we don't. Once does the order have a set release date yet, Eureka? It it does not. Okay, so the fact of the matter is, one of the things I learned while they were talking about Bioshock Infinite is that when they saw it at press events and this and that, is that the frame rate sucked on Bioshock Infinite, and at the end of the day, it all came together, didn't it? Yeah, seemingly, yeah. So technical and polish is one of the last things you they do. Um, one of the things they do that game developers do do is they ship with something called KS, known shippables. Uh, it's a list of bugs that ship with the game that they know about, but they didn't have time to stump out. So if there is a jittery frame rate, uh, they will uh, put it on a list and hopefully stomp it out with a patch in the future. Um, so so then, okay. I, 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 th I think he's... It's right to criticize a game, like, based on the gameplay prior to its release, but the technical side, if it's a month before release, like, if we were seeing Infamous Second Son with uh, low 20 frame rates, now, a month before release, actually three weeks before release, then I'd say that's okay to criticize, because hey. Infamous has gone gold. Yeah, Infamous but this is gold. This game, this game is is in its home stretch of development here. We're we're talking about the difference but of the, a few weeks, and I know that a lot can change over the course of a few weeks. But but it's the it's the frame rate that gets polished last. Eureka, right. that's the thing. All right, that's what I'm saying. Even if it's in its home stretch of development, they might not start polishing the frame rate till two months prior to going gold. All right. So Dark Spine, where do you, where do you take something like this? Do you think he's out of line for basically writing down his feelings about what he played? And oh, by the way, I want to come out and say this. Ready at Dawn came out and said and, and released a statement um, following his preview saying that we were also aware there was some unforeseen snafus, some audio issues and things that happened. They didn't try to refute what he said. They agreed with it. They just said that we need a little bit more time. What do you think, Darkspine? I think that, well, you should go in, and the reader should go in with the understanding that this is a preview, this is obviously something that isn't a finished product, something that's still a work in progress. I feel that uh, he did the right thing by speaking up, that there were issues in what he played. I feel that uh, there is far too much publisher dick writing in the uh, the uh, games journalism, and uh, it's kind of refreshing to me to see uh, a major a major figure in that industry like Colin Moriarty stepping out and saying this is bad. Mm. That's exactly how I felt about it. I was like, this is like fucking, this is like taking a shower and pulling spring water right here. This is awesome. Because he came out, I, I liked I liked the fact that, just as you said, dick riding. Everybody is dick riding. When you read previews in a magazine or, you know, a, a publication of any kind, leading up to it, even when you know, even some of those shitty, like, movie games that come out, and they always have some, like, little twist of positiveness to it, at, you know, at the end, or, or, or lining it all throughout. We'll have to wait and see. It still looks kind of fun. You just sit there and you roll your eyes because you just know from everything you've seen that a game might be shit. And they never, ever come out and speak, like, their God's honest truth about it. So the fact that Moriarty had the balls to kind of come out and be like, you know what? 
the game doesn't fucking play very good right now. It's kind of generic or it, the frame rates don't look good. There's some shit going on with the game. That's why I want to read a first impression. I want to know what what is the gameplay like. If Ready at Dawn was brave enough to have somebody, a gaming journalist, a journalist from a huge publication come in and hold a PlayStation 4 controller and play that game and, and the game was not running up to snuff, shame on them, not shame on him. Blab? So, uh, what I want to say was, first of all, because a lot of people are doing this because they don't like Colin Moriarty, and fair reason, because Colin Moriarty couldn't find his ass if he had two hands on it. But, um, I mean, another thing is, I am personally a little biased uh, for uh, Ready at Dawn, because I played a lot of their prior games, and I've loved the work that they've done on it. Also, I think that if Sony has already gotten so much positive press from these people. Who knows how many games of, uh, who knows how many games Color Morty already has actually sold for Sony just based on positive impressions. I think that's fair game. And one more quick fact I want to drop on you. I'm not going to say who, but a certain System Wars member is the lead graphics designer on the Order 1886. Yeah, I know who that is. Okay, uh, well, I don't think, yeah. I don't think we don't, we don't need public. to say it. We don't need to say it. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. And yeah. I find that a little system war bias in me right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, cool. I'm excited to get the game. I mean, I, I think uh, everything that we said, even Animal with you as far as putting polish on the game, I have no problem with it. I think the Order 1886 is going to be an awesome game. I'm a little... Oh, I'm I'm a little I'm a little I'm a little disappointed in 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 the the no co-op thing because the game looks on the surface like a co-op game but I'm yeah. not here to talk about that. I I'm, I'm just talking about the issue at hand where a, a, you know the Sony fans, the diehard Sony fans or the people that are excited for this game in general. I won't generalize, you know, a group of people, but the gamers that are excited for this game really were upset and took issue with what Moriarty said. But when you take a step back and you look at it, you have to go into it like Darkspine said that you're going into this game knowing that it's a pre-build. I just want to know what your impressions are in the game. Don't sugarcoat it. Why do I, I'm a grown man. I don't need someone to sugarcoat it. Tell me what you thought about the game. That's it. But if it's, but if it's a pre-build in an alpha, do we really need all that rigmarole of low frame rates, texture poppins, and all that shit? I mean, we know it's if it's a, if it's an alpha or do, do or games that. do games release with pop in and 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 texture issues? Yeah, they yeah they still do. Then I, then I want to know about but, it. But but what I'm saying is, I want to know about it in the final product. I want to know about how the game is shaping up. I don't want to know. Uh, you know like I said, you know, a lot of my knowledge recently has come from Giant Bomb. I don't want to know about the technical issues of a game until it releases because that's when it matters. It's when the game releases. That's when the technical issues matter. Sure, so so maybe maybe Moriarty sits down then, and I want to hear Hyle's response on this since he's the king cow. Um, but maybe Moriarty sits down, plays the game, and genuinely in his heart of hearts feels like, you know what, this game's not playing as well as I hoped it would. And... Then he goes back and he writes a glowing review about, oh man, it's so good, this game's going to be badass, and Re Ready at Dawn ignores the fact that there's some frame rate issues, there's some audio things. Maybe maybe his, this controversial, quote unquote, uh, controversial, you know, preview is the, is the catalyst that gets Ready at Dawn to go back and look at it and say, hey, you know what guys, like, they fucking notice that shit's not running as good as it should. Maybe we need to take a look at this. Well, that's a really good point. But before I interject, Kyle, what do you think about all this? All right. So I actually think uh, I agree with uh, Darkspine a little bit there. Uh, they should. I mean, I I don't mind that he uh, said that stuff. It didn't bother me because I know it's not going to be a representation of the final product. But I will draw haste or objection to what uh, Eroica said because there's many games where they ride a uh, similar situation up to release. So for what quickly came to my mind was uh, Dead Rising 3. Um, Killzone and Rise, they all, all those games had uh, issues when they were releasing. Rise, there were people were saying that it's like uh, playing a telephone. Or Dead Rising 3, they made uh, issues and Killzone of both the frame rates. So that was before the final release. So, and both sides, Lems and Cows, were, you know, it's not going to be that way, blah, blah, blah. So to me, I don't care. I know it's alpha footage. And I still really haven't played any video game that hasn't had some sort of bug or hiccup in it. So as long as it doesn't detract from the overall experience, like say um, 
Fallout New Vegas or something where it first comes out, it's unplayable. Or um, uh, what else? Can't really say the multiplayer games, but um, you know, or Rage where it wouldn't work with uh, certain uh, video cards. Um, that's uh, acceptable. Being alpha footage, um, I don't mind when he said that. He also had some in the same article some really uh, good things to say about it. So yep. Um, and I am also uh, with Blabadon that uh, I want to support the game too because I've played uh, a couple of the Ready at Dawn games for the PSP, and uh, I also want to support uh, the local guy, the guy that uh, is working for them. So. Um, yeah, so I, I don't mind that he said that. I think the game's still gonna be good. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the deluxe CE edition, whatever that is. So nice. Um, hopefully so it comes with some. Hopefully it comes out with some sick uh, sick ass statue of some Victorian guy with the, you know, with an AR-15. Hyle has the collector's edition of Hayes too. Um, I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there wasn't one. But also, right. you know, the last thing I'll say is that is a Titanfall recently they. They were playing the multiplayer with uh, without the textures loaded, you know, the twenty five percent, and yep. so I disagree with you on saying that it doesn't happen. It's all dick writing. I think plenty of games by journalists get uh, uh, brought up for the shortcomings they may have. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that, and I, Hyle, I think that's a stu- I think that's that's fair to say. Um, and again, like you know, and I, I think I share that sentiment with um, with what Dark Spine had originally said is just that, you know. When I when I go to a preview, when I go to a site and I want to see a, read a preview, it's that I want to know a, a general impression of of specifics, I guess, of, of what the game offers and and where it's at. So um, I I was happy with it. I actually didn't find a problem with it at all. I thought it was a whole lot of bitching from a community that that really needs to take a step back and say, you know what, it's the game isn't the game isn't out. Like we know better. It's not like it's almost like people's feelings get hurt if somebody says something about a game before it gets released, and it's like, come on. I have, a, I have a feeling the order will be pushed to 2015. Ooh. Because That's it, just my opinion. <laughs> because of the, the shitty textures and the pop-in and the low frame? No, 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 no. <laughs> just, just because I think, I, think, I think Ready at Dawn is a good studio. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, this being their first full title console game, I think they'll just want the time to make sure it's good to go. Because like Kyle said, you know, the, the God of War games aren't too bad on the PSP. Yeah. You know, what is it, God of War, Chains of Olympus, and... and Ghost of Sparta. Ghost of Sparta. They're not bad, but, yeah. uh, you know, I'd, I'd rather have let a developer have time than to say, okay, sure. we got to get this out, we got to get this out. Sure. All right, so let's let's keep this moving fast. Um, I'm going to open up the next uh, question, the next gnawing question to one of our guests. Um, Blab or DSS, does either of you want to take it? Sure, I'll jump in. Okay. So, uh... Recently, news came to light that Nintendo will be closing down the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection full stop. That uh, pretty much covers all of the Wii and DS games, including some such as uh, Metroid Prime Hunters and Mario Kart DS, which are very online-focused titles, and others such as Pokemon Black and White 2, which are only a couple years old. So, uh... On one hand, I can see out of this big list of games, there's maybe five that are a big deal, but uh, some of them, like, some of them I'm not sure if Nintendo's shutting the servers off a bit prematurely. Like, uh, it's kind of wondering what the feeling is here about Nintendo just full stop shutting off the online connectivity for two still fairly recent, fairly active systems. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't think does the Wii see. I don't know a lot about the Wii. I played Xenoblade. I played Twilight Princess. Uh, I'm trying to get through. Uh, I'm trying to get through uh, Bar- Bar- Skyward Sword. What? I mean, like, is, is there a lot of online play in the Wii? On um, the Wii, on the Wii, not really. There's a Smash Bros. and Mario Kart, but uh, there's a lot more on the DS. Like I was saying, the, the Pokemon game's definitely still very active. The DS is troublesome because there, I could, like you said, I could see there being a strong community there. Uh, it's it's definitely shitty, but like, like I said, I think what was I think while I was arguing with Vlad pre-podcast, you know, if 
if you have a million people who own the game and only a thousand people are playing, you know, like what's what's the point? You know, though we don't know the metrics. Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't know a lot about Nintendo. I have the Wii U. I think it's a great system. Uh, they definitely need to pick up steam with their online stuff, though, and shutting it, shutting things down like Pokemon X and Y. I mean, black and white, or possibly black and white two, is kind of stupid. It is black and white too. It's all DS games, all Wii uh, games. I, it, it, so, it sounds to me like it's a statistical move. Nintendo, I'm sure, you know, has their their numbers and their information compiled in front of them before they make a decision like that. I don't, I don't think they're trying to be malicious in in doing something like this. But um, I think they probably sit down, they look at what is being played on their system, they look at what it's costing to keep it up, to keep it maintained, or. Or whatever, and there there has to be some type of a of a cost in in some way, shape, or form to them. Otherwise, they would just leave it up and say, "Why not?" You know, keep it active. Um, it sounds to me more like uh, the numbers of people that are actually being active um, on, on the, the those two particular consoles playing games through Wi-Fi is probably very low. Um, and that's probably why they did it. Now, I'm obviously you know I, I'm obviously hypothesizing on this, but um, it, it the, the overall scheme of it though uh DSS it, it makes me feel a little bit like the original Xbox where I felt like it still had some life to it it still for me anyways was still being actively used um and uh really being enjoyed and um to kind of have the support pulled away and have it kind of cut out from underneath it it's not exactly a paralleled situation but um it certainly ha- rings echoes of it and um i can see where people who are into those games would be pretty pissed about it what do you think Kyle? yeah i mean i agree with uh you uh, where there has to be some threshold for cost so unfortunately, that's the big downfall. Down, sorry, downfall of uh, console games is um, sooner or later the servers will be shut off. Um, whereas PC, even if that does happen, there's people that go on to make their own um, servers. So yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I just don't imagine there's that it's going to impact that many people. Um, and I think they knew that saying that, but the people it sucks. Yeah, the people that do take advantage of it, it sucks, and but not much um, they can do about it. I guess. I mean, just it is what it is. You got to move on. Yeah, agreed. Um, how about Blab? Did you miss it? Um, I mean, I, I'm just going to uh, interject really quickly. So, Animal and I were talking before the podcast about how we, how, um, at what point is it okay? for a game to have no spoiler tags when discussing a story. I'm and I think this is very similar to, to it later, Animal. And I think this is very similar when you come to um the when you come down to it. If a game's a certain years old, especially on systems as archaic as the DS and the Wii, I think that at this point people should not care. Especially because the Wii had barely a proper semblance of online in most of its games and the ds as far as i know outside of the pokemon games did not have many online interactions and like you guys were saying earlier i think a lot of people who competitively p- played pokemon online which is actually a very popular thing to do in the gaming community have moved to online servers literally on their pcs so that's what i think i think at this point it's something that people should move on about with good reason Okay, okay, uh, just to kind of throw this on the other foot now, say three years down the line, PSN and Xbox Live for the seventh gen consoles just shut off. Like, does this, I, mean, I guess the question is, does this set kind of a uncomfortable precedent, or? Well, uh, <laughs> you, uh, that's, that's something that I've, uh, I've been thinking about a lot, and I've read about in Game Informer, and I've asked some uh, GameSpot employees that I'm very close with about, uh, you know, managers who go to the conferences and this and that. Um, Regardless of how we feel, I'm farting, hold on. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that stays uh, in the recording. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, regardless, Regardless of how we feel, the monetary... Uh, output of these services is eventually going to dwindle to the point where it's not worth the output for Sony or Microsoft to keep alive. That's why at least I'm going to buy an extra PS3 and an extra Xbox 360 and I'm going to download all my content onto that stuff. 
uh, just for to future proof those consoles that I have now because that content won't always be on the store, and that's something we unfortunately are going to have to deal with in the digital age. Uh, luckily, something like Steam exists where uh, we can always have those games and stuff. Uh, I'm with you. I'm with you, Dark Spine. I have a one terabyte PS uh, PS3 drive at all. Uh, one terabyte PS3 hard drive too. Um, but that's something you have to do if you want to hold on to the consoles and stuff. You have to future proof it. Uh, I'm sure at a certain point Sony will cut the service. I mean, Sony seems a little bit easier than Microsoft to deal with. But uh, regardless, all those. All those DLCs we've bought and all that content we have is going to go away eventually. Uh, it's not going to stay up forever uh, unless Sony implements or Microsoft implements some kind of streaming program where, uh, hey, if you own Borderlands 2 and all the DLC, we have it on your account. So just start streaming it all from whatever cloud-based server we have, though I don't think that'll be the case. That would be very cool. But uh, that's not the case. You know, yep. you need to hold on to your content in some form. And the problem is we have systems with hard drives now, so that stuff fails eventually. They'll also be probably more graceful about it because Nintendo's online last generation, like I said, was pretty awful. In yeah. fact, I mean, the, the last Wii that they released literally had no online features, the Wii Mini. So... I mean, well, they took it out of the system, they, right? They took it out of the system altogether because, I mean, they were not good with the Wii, and they're trying to implement that now in the Wii U. Honestly, like Anne was saying, with the digital age coming, there's going to be something going on. Steam's done a pretty near-perfect job, if I can say, with uh, keeping the rights, keeping people with the rights to all the digital games. I think that the backlash that it would receive with the hundreds of dollars people have spent on PSN and Xbox Live there will be some sort of way that at least buying and uh, downloading your content will be a lot easier, even if the online games, even if the game's online components don't stay, like Resistance 3, a fairly decent online game, 2011 release, that's getting shut down. Uh, Mag, Sony's still selling Mag, even though it's shutting down its online servers soon. Mm. So I, I think they're going to do something about it much more gracefully than Nintendo ever will, anyways. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Kyle, you got anything to add? No, I think that's pretty good for that topic. Yeah. All right, so let's move along. Who wants to go next? All right, I'll go next. I'll go next. All right, Lab. So, Spoilers. According... <laughs> I'll go next. According to Variety, Sony has hired Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg to both write and direct a business thriller tentatively named title Console Wars. Sorry. They will adapt Blake Harris's book, Console Wars, Sega, Nintendo, and the Battle that Defined a Generation, which is being published by Atlantic Books this August. Scott Rudin, who produced The Social Network and Moneyball, is also on as a producer. So what do you guys think about uh, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg producing a film discussing the console war between Nintendo and Sega back in the 80s? If it's like Grandma's Boy, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I'll talk to my mom. <laughs> I, 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 I'll start uh, with that. Um, I, I, grandma's I, boy. Oh. oh, sorry. No, I was going to say I'll start with that. I, I think that um, I think it's actually very intriguing. I think that, um, you know, there's there are a lot of intriguing and compelling stories in the video game world. And speaking as somebody who grew up, I think I was in eighth grade when the Super Nintendo came out. Um, and I, that was the beginning of the system wars for me. Um, somebody asked me, when did you start arguing consoles? It was Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. And I was a huge Super Nintendo nerd. I was a huge Nintendo nerd for a long, long time. And, um, I think that given enough care, um, it's not, you know, I, I have no problem with either of those two guys personally. I think that they, um, have got some stuff that I find funny and, and interesting. So I don't have any problem with their involvement in it. I, I really am excited to see what they do with it because that was like the dawn of the console wars. That was like when people were at each other's throat. I remember being in class and arguing with kids who just bought a Genesis and, you know, you're, you're throwing games, <laughs> you know, you're throwing games out at them that you just got from the Super Nintendo. Well, you know, they'd be like, oh, we got the Mortal Kombat blood. And can, can I say something as a, uh, as a fellow, as a filmmaker? No, you know what it is? Seth Rogen is a very smart man. He's been a comedian since he was, what, 
thir- uh, 13, 14. Um, if anyone could nail that kind of comedy down, I think it could be him. And I think he's a perfect fit for a movie like that. Um, that's about I it. I mean, he's he's worked on some of Hollywood's biggest movies. Yeah. Uh, he helped write some of the Ali G show, and he's been a writer for a bunch of other stuff. Um, so they're I, calling it a business thriller, not necessarily a comedy. I'm sure it'll have comedic elements in it, but 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 a business thriller based on the video game wars, written by Seth Rogen. Yeah, is, I mean, yeah, you're right, you're right. Is willing to, I mean, think about it. He co-wrote, like, This is the End, and he wrote The Green Hornet, and he wrote Pineapple Express and Superbad. Like, I'm sure he could take the, he could be contextual about the situation and still make it funny. Like, uh, Wolf of Wall Street was about stock trading, but it was still funny at times. Uh, I mean, it wasn't meant to be a comedy, but... It was still funny at times, you know? That's what I was thinking, Wolf of Wall Street. What do you think, Kyle? Uh, I, I, I think it's a – I think you had a point is there. I think um, – uh, I think it – hopefully it's a comedy. I don't really care. I don't think uh, it would be quite as good if it was a uh, drama. But comedy, I think it would have – you know, just because we live the, live the life uh, in the forums would be kind of funny. That's all I got. What about you, Eroica? Did you comment on it? I commented on it. Yeah, okay. Dark Dark Spine. What did you think? Did you comment? Uh, I kind of missed the introduction. I assume it's the System Wars movie. Yeah. 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 Console Wars. Yep. Um, I'm interested. Uh, not sure what I think about Seth Rogen doing it, but uh, if I've learned anything from System from uh the forums, it's uh that if you can't have a bit of <laughs> have a sense of humor about it, it's just gonna get to you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, who, I think the only two people we have I, left that have uh, topics would be Heil and Mr. Danger himself, Animal Mother. Animal, you want to go? go? Go ahead, Animal. You know what my biggest gripe is? Um, I hate it when games are announced uh, more than 12 months in advance. Alan Wake, for example. Um, the Last Guardian. The Last Guardian. I still have a pre-order down on that. I or Duke Nukem. It's vaporware, Blab. Get over it. I I think games. I think if a game is on track to come out, I don't think it should announce more than twelve months in advance. Um, and I understand that most games are announced that far in advance to generate hype, but games like Final Fantasy fifteen, they shouldn't have announced that until they knew it was coming out. It's like announce developers should announce their shit when they know it's coming out. Unless there's some kind of oh, whoa, uh, unless there's some <laughs> kind of uh, last minute pull, developers should not be announcing games more than a year and a half in, in advance, unless they know for certain that those games are coming out, because it just generates this false hype, not knowing when a game is going to come out. Like I don't mind if they're like saying, hey. 12 months from now, this game's going to come out. Plus or minus, like, three or four months. That's fine. But if you're announcing a game, you're like, yeah, TBA. Like, I'm happy EA finally announced Mirror's Edge 2. (laughs) But I'm fucking pissed that they just put, when it's done. Like, just (laughs) fucking say, just say fucking 16 months from now. I'd be happy as a clam. You know, don't announce a game if you can't fucking get it out, you know? Because people put money down on this shit. GameStop opens up pre-orders. I did, yeah. I did. You know, and it's fucking stupid. It's like, just just announce it when you know it's going to come out. Like, I'm, I'm sick of game, hearing about games, and I'm like, holy shit, this is going to be awesome. Like, Spy Party. I don't even know if it's fucking out yet, but I know it's been announced for more than two years. Agent, yeah, there's Agent. World class PS3 exclusive, according to Heil. <laughs> I, I, I mean, The Last Guardian, Final Fantasy 15, Duke Nukem Forever. These are just some of the examples where, like, yeah, it's fucking coming out. If you don't. Too know human. You, don't announce it. Too human. <laughs> uh, let's start. Uh, Dark Spine, how do you feel about this, this uh, topic? Um, I feel like uh, we're seeing a lot less of that lately. Um, 
just to kind of draw a parallel with Super Smash Brothers Brawl for a minute. Um, man, the hype train for that was just nuts. Uh, he had the dojo doing daily updates for like a year and a half, and uh, the new Smash Bros. Uh, it's coming out sometime 2014. It was officially announced sometime last year. Like, I think pe- most publishers are actively trying to minimize that kind of thing. Because, I don't know, I might say the hype train is uh, kind of self-fueling now, may- when it might not have been so back in the day. But, uh, I don't know, when it does happen, um, personally, I just don't get too hyped up over anything until it has a date to begin with so mostly indifference i guess <laughs> uh Heil, how do you feel about this why well, i disagree with you i think you're completely wrong because okay. on a cycle of a game to make a game is probably i mean if you look at call of duty for the worst possible uh example it takes two years to make a call of duty game Fuck. even when they Copy and uh, copy and paste. So when you're looking at a game that's like uh, announced like an E3, I don't think that's too much to ask. You know, a year they're trying to build uh, build excitement for the game as well. You know, you can't but, really you can't really say, well, four months from now this game's coming out. Um, no, I'm saying within 12 months. Like they should at least say within a 12 month period that they should be like this game is finally coming out. Yeah. Not within four months. But, you know, the, the other side of that coin is, you know, people take you know, advantage of that. But things happen. Last Guardian, Two Human, you know, even but Drive it, Club and other games. So, I don't know. I mean, I think a year or so is fine because the development cycle of a game is so long. So, it's nice to, you know, see about new games and see their progression coming along. Personally, I, I don't mind. Hmm. What about you, Eroica? Um, I, I see where Animal's going with it. I mean, I can agree. I mean, um you know, it's pretty well established. Um, you know, one of my favorite franchises is Mass Effect. And I know that, you know, I followed Bioware games tooth and nail when they announced, you know, Mass Effect each day that went by was like, oh my God, like, I can't wait to play this game. It was just too much. Like, I didn't want to wait for it. And uh, so, I mean, I, I get the frustration in it. Um, whether or not I think it's right or wrong, it's hard for me to say. I mean, I, you know, I was just irritated. I was pretty vocal not too long ago on the forums about the game Drive Club and, you know, the fact that there's a game that we thought we would have in our hands right now that we should be playing right now and it got pushed and it got pushed and it still doesn't have a release date. And I, I guess the point I'm making is that you don't know what's going to happen in the development process and not being a developer myself, I'm the last person that should be commenting on what I think goes on in the development process. I'm sure that um, all along the way there's deadlines and there's, there's little pitfalls and things that can slow down and hamper development of a game. So I, I don't think that necessarily everybody goes into it thinking like, I don't think the last guardian, for example, was something that they threw out like a small little tech demo that they made in a weekend and said, Hey, let's fuck with people for, the next 10 years on this game like i think that they had every intention of having that game out in a timely manner um i I just think that shit happens um and it sucks ultimately for them and it sucks for us because you know a game like the last guardian we don't even know if we're going to ever see that game um you know games like two human we ended up getting and it turned out to be a commercial flop and it turned out to be a game that gamers uh wasted their time waiting on i i liked the game i thought the game was actually kind of fun it wasn't great but um it had some decent co-op in it but um two human two human um but you know i mean it's it's really it's such a finicky thing you know it's they're not they're not sitting in their their apartments and painting a picture and saying, "I'll have this out to you by next week." They're 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 creating something as Animal likes to put it, zeros and ones, in such a you know an intricate and delicate you know process that it doesn't surprise me that shit like this happens. What sucks is when we it, it comes at the expense of our our hopes and our hype for it. So that's my take on it. Cool. Cool. Uh, Blab, did we ask you about this? No, I'll just say because, I mean, it's not like any of us can actually change the industry as it goes, and game developers obviously want to create as much hype as they can. I feel like you can show me something one year beforehand if you can show me some viable gameplay. Because I get excited really easily, but I've become really disenchanted with how 
uh, developers have gradually E3 began showing more trailers and everything. And I don't mean gameplay like Killzone's like what, 2006 demo. I want like actual actual gameplay if I can if you can do it before a year out. And yeah, you're right. There's a lot of games where this has actually not happened. Like Bioshock Infinite, Infinite was six months out from just like not being released. They got their shit together in the last six months because I mean the publisher basically said we have to release a game. I think things like that is why you should possibly show your gameplay a year ahead. So then, then they don't have these situations where the dev- the publisher's going, all right, guys, we got to get some shit going. We spent so much money. There's got to be something to show for it. So a game for like, uh, what about a game like uh, Project X? So that was announced last year at E3. It's almost been a year and we've seen just a little bit of it, not even really gameplay. So. We saw some gameplay at the last Nintendo Direct. Yeah, they showed something. They- so... Oh, then, I'm I mean, sorry, I didn't know that. I didn't see that. So yeah, no, they're they're tickling fans slowly, and then Nintendo is still getting you know the hang of all this. I always like to call them the one exception, but I see what you mean. So if it, I I agree with you, Blab. If it's consistent, like you know, if they're feeding the viewers something, be my guess. But if it if you just announce a game and nothing's coming, it gets kind of like meddlesome and just like it becomes yeah. a pain in the ass you know it's just yeah. like when is this coming out i have 60 dollars um, in the last guardian at gamestop and all i see is pictures of team Ico at like japanese restaurants eating sushi and i'm like come on <laughs> just give me my damn game but i know what you mean i agree well apparently that's coming with the ps4 that's that's It'll bizarre to, to see a game announced last generation at the beginning of last generation and now it's going to come out in the beginning of this generation. Like, yeah. why can't why can't Team Eco get their shit together? Like, what yeah. takes them so long? The director of Eco and Shadow the Colossus, Fumito Ueda. They left, I guess, right? He, he left. He essentially left. But he said, I promise I will stay and finish the game with you guys. And, I mean, hell, I don't even know if they started the game. But... Yeah. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. So, Heil, uh... Are we on you now? Final topic? Yeah, I think so. Mine will be pretty easy. So with the release of the PS4 in Japan, it sold 322,000 units. Is console gaming dead in Japan? The PS4 in four months has already sold out uh, past the Wii U and sales being, I imagine, more expensive than the Wii U. It should be. Um, is Japan going to slowly just become a handheld only uh, country, if not already? Hmm. Animal. I read a similar topic. Sorry, if you want to go, Animal, do you want no, to go? No, 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 go ahead. Bro. No, no, you go. I, I read a similar topic in NeoGAF about um, saying, why do Westerners not like handhelds? And the first response nailed it. It's because the Western society is mostly a car society. And that's one place where Japan differs so much. So I think we can, I don't have to explain it. We all know why Japan loves handheld so much. That's where the developers go if they want a cheaper budget to use. They can obviously appeal more because the sales there. I don't think that console gaming is dying in Japan. This is my opinion on it. Just because that is an area that is the most vital area that there's been no significant competition in to be replaced. Handheld gaming has mobile gaming to worry about if it's going to be replaced. That's a different topic altogether, but handheld gaming actually has some issues with it. Whereas console gaming has no viable option right now to replace it. And for that reason alone, I don't think console gaming is dead in Japan. Hmm. Uh, like you said, Blab, it's a, it's a very commuter-heavy society over there, whereas we're based on automobiles and whatnot. So I highly agree with you. I think uh, three thousand. I think three hundred thousand units in its first week is not bad. Uh, you know, considering the software release of the Knack Killzone, uh, so on and so forth. I mean, you start putting out JRPGs, they'll start coming and buying. It's like Field of Dreams. If the Japanese uh, devs build it, they they will come. Um, because we know Microsoft, regardless of Titanfall or not, I think that uh, I think that you know the PS4 will dominate 
I think it'll sell. I think it'll go over to sell maybe 10 to 20 million units in its lifetime over there over the next 10 years. Um, they have Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy, what, 14 versus? I mean, those are on, f- f- those are multiplats versus. too. Yeah, yeah, those, that's what I'm saying. Those are multiplats. Like, you wouldn't expect, I mean, maybe, maybe it's like you guys. I didn't personally expect those to be on the 360. Sorry, not 360, the Xbox One. And I mean, I think for that reason alone, the animal's right that the Microsoft will do a lot better if that's what he's saying in Japan this gen than they did last one. No, I I don't think that they will no? do better. I think right. that I think that the complications of that system being a very social system, a very TV oriented system, will hurt them. I think Titanfall might help a little bit because it has big fucking robots. <laughs> but uh, I mean, otherwise, once the JRPGs start coming out, I mean. I mean, how much did Tales of Vesperia push or Lost Odyssey? Were they push? They didn't push more than what? They, they fa- less than a, less than a couple thousand units. I mean, what? The 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 numbers for those games. You're talking about the early 360 releases of those. Um, those actually did move a fair number of consoles. Those games. Um, I, well, I guess it's all relative. I mean, the the Xbox brand has has been pretty much DOA since. Uh, it made its first attempt, but I do remember there being some pretty significant hikes in, um, in in console sales when those particular games did come out. It wasn't enough to sustain it, but yeah. um, um, you know, my, my point of view on that blab, I think that's an excellent question. The one that you brought up with, uh, you know, is is console gaming dead in Japan? Um, I think that it's kind of unclaimed. It's becoming unclaimed territory again. I think that consoles. Uh, or these, I won't say consoles because they're just a piece of hardware, but these companies need to figure out ways to appeal to them again. I think that we're having turnover in that region, um, possibly because the way that those cons- the consoles are, 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 you know, what they're going for maybe doesn't fall in line with, you know, the taste of the Japanese gamer. I know that's Captain Obvious saying that, but... Um, I think that it's a, it's kind of a new horizon. I think these companies should look at it more as an opportunity to kind of reinvent itself. Microsoft, especially considering they've never been able to get a foothold in Japan, I'd like to see these companies do something a little bit more daring over there to try to get um, people to see the value in consoles again. But I don't think that we're going to see big numbers um, any more out of that region in consoles. It definitely will make a difference uh, this gen, and it definitely will will lean towards Sony, um, but. I don't know. I'd like to see, like I said, my, my, my closing thought on that is I'd like to see them try some brave new tactics to try to get people to really, really dig on those systems other than just here's a new JRPG. Here's a new JRPG. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to counterpoint that real quick. Sure. Um, right. the, the biggest problem with Microsoft is they have a tendency to orphan things. I mean, look at the 360 in Japan. What did they take? Three stabs at it, four stabs at it before they were gone. Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey. Uh, Star Ocean, The Last Hope, and Tales of Vesperia. They sold one out of 126 million population. They sold 1.6 million consoles. That sounds right, yeah. That's a drop in the bucket. That's, what is that, 1%? I mean, less or whatever it may be. Whatever the number may be. It's 1%. Japan has a tendency to orphan things. If they don't see the value right away... Microsoft will drop the support right away. And that's what happened this last generation as well. As soon as the, the next-gen consoles got account, announced, right before even, be a little bit before, I'd say about a year before, Microsoft orphaned the 360. They're leaving it to the fucking third-party devs now. I mean, aside from Ju- Gears of War Judgment, can anyone tell me a new or original IP that they've come up with? Sony had, what, Tearaway, Puppeteer... At least a couple new IPs. We're talking for the 360? 360 here? Yeah, for the 360. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Nothing. nothing. They, Battle they, Block they, Theater they, wasn't Microsoft, right? Uh, no. It's not it. No. no. I would say, when when would we say that they orphaned the system? Late 2012 is when they finally just said... This is, this is Heil's answer. Heil's got to say this answer. <laughs> 2009... 2009. <laughs> I got to start off. <laughs> yeah. Microsoft did the unthinkable. <laughs> All right. Do you want me to say the whole thing? <laughs> yeah, dude. Don't let us hey. down. They went upwards of 65% casual to chase the Wii's <laughs> pot of gold with LOL Connect. LOL. La, 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 la. <laughs> it hasn't been the same since. La, la, la. 
and uh, Animal's right, and so is Eroka at, at some points. Um, Microsoft has actually, I remember they've tried before. I think with back with the original Xbox on getting uh, Japanese developers, I think Bill Gates had this, uh, you can search it up, I could be wrong here. Bill Gates had this presentation in Japan, yep. basically with a lot of uh, Japanese developers on hand. And um, they all basically were like, oh, we're in support for this system, that being the original Xbox. And that tactic just didn't work, like with Japan. Like you can see the original Xbox numbers. Lord knows what they were, but I mean, it didn't help them in Japan. And I think that's one of the things that Animal was saying. They pretty much orphaned that idea then, and God only knows how fast they orphaned that system too. So yeah, I think we need, if they will sell more than the 360 did, they need some crazy tactics to open Japan, which we can also already say is a fledgling um, console market, even though I think it'll be fine. It is still fledgling, and that's there. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Japan's gonna be uh, is gonna be a wild card this gen. Um, I don't know. I, I I still to this day though feel like part of Microsoft's dissonance in Japan is based around the fact that it's not a. It's just it's just so. And this might sound weird, but it's just so Americanized, and I feel like it just that that it doesn't relate to the Japanese gamer. I I don't know. Something I've always felt like the, the way the UI is set up, the way that you know, the way that the you know the, the the system flows, the way that it works, and obviously its bigger games are not going to appeal. Um, the Halos of the world aren't aren't going to appeal to Japan in in a big way. But um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so guys, I think we're uh, we're good. I think we're going to close this bitch up. Is everybody uh, satisfied? All right, I'll take yeah. that as a yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm. Uh, I'm super happy. This was an awesome cast. I love yeah, it. I really like this. I think that um, you know everybody had uh, had a pretty cool little topic to bring. So if the community liked a cast like this and want us to do it again, or if you want to be on the Pedal to the Metal podcast, all you have to do is ask. You just got to let myself, the Eroica, Heil sixty eight, Animal Mother, shit, let Dark Spine Slayer, or Blabadon know if you'd like to. If Blabadon <laughs> gets. Uh, Gets his uh his name back on uh, GameSpot. Rolling back. Yeah, TB. Hashtag the return. The yes. return. Yeah, you better make some kick-ass threads, dude. If you come back, like you used to. So um, <laughs> so um, certainly let us know if you guys want to be on Pedal to the Metal. Check us out at PointInsertion.com where we are feeding the masses with an awesome new web series called Cactus Team. We've got a cool little Let's Play that we're developing called uh, Velocity Video. And, of course, you can find the home of Pedal to the Metal uh, with our forums too, which will be up and running right on Point Insertion. So we're excited about that as well. We definitely want you guys to come and check things out. Um, I'm going to turn things over to Heil68. He's going to kick us out of here. Yeah, thanks for joining us all. Like Roka said, if you want to join us, hit us up. Otherwise, we'll talk to you later. Later. See ya. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening.